There we go. Got the selfie stick this time. It's actually really nice outside. I'm only wearing the jacket in case it randomly rains. And yeah, so this is my new jacket. I posted about this on random social media, but um, long story short, it's a jacket that actually fits me, which is extremely rare. Um, and it's also two sizes smaller than what I normally get, but it's in a tall, so it actually fits me lengthwise, which is nice. A little ridiculous that I'm wearing this jacket in shorts, but you know, it's me. What do you expect? So, um, yeah, I guess I'm going to be collecting all my walking vlogs into one video or something. I don't know. That doesn't make much sense because these vlogs are actually fairly long. Oh well. Maybe I'll actually upload the other one. Who knows? So, oh, what's been going on? Um, well, I'm obviously a little bit better at walking at the moment, so that's nice. That branch is moving for no reason. That's creepy. Um, I've been super busy this past week with work stuff. Next week, not as in... So today, for reference, is Saturday the is it 20th of May. 20th, 21st, something like that. Um, so next week, not as in starting Monday, but the following Monday, I will be on vacation. I will be going to upstate New York, which, you know, I lived in New York City for a year and a half when I was a kid. I never visited upstate. I never really left the city area. In fact, I don't even think I left the city period. Not just the metro area, but like New York City. No, I take that back. I definitely went to Long Island a few times. Because my father worked in Long Island. Anyway, um, let's see. So yeah, I'm going to be going to stay in a castle in New York. Uh, it's a house that looks like a castle. But it has a bunch of neat themes. It's very heavily themed. There's a bunch of costumes in the house. Expect pictures. Um, <sighs> so because of that, I have to do a lot of prep this week. And uh, somebody's cleaning. That's mostly what I'm doing this weekend is prep. Uh, between this walk where I'm going to get some cash because unfortunately not everybody accepts plastic um i'll rant about cash in a bit but um also needing to prep for my role-playing adventure this coming week which is going to involve some maps uh, that's actually what i wanted to talk about first was that so wish my selfie stick was a little more comfortable. This is basically just a tripod that happens to have a rotating neck that allows you to make it a selfie stick. I should have paid a little more attention, but also having a portable tripod is useful, so whatever. Anyway, um, so role playing. So we are approaching the end of my campaign, finally, where... The, there is going to be an encounter. It is unlikely at this point that the players will... Uh, I don't even know why I'm wearing these. They're not even all powered on right now. Um, it's unlikely that the players are going to avoid said encounter. And it will likely happen next week. Uh, so I'm actually going to ensure that it happens next week because we're going to be down a player after I get back from vacation for a bit. And I don't want the player to miss out on stabbing goodness. Um, though, come to think of it, this time the player's not playing a rogue. The player's playing a bard, but still, stabbing goodness. So, a little bit of background as to what's going on. The This is the dining campaign. So, the dining campaign is named after the whole phrase, Tonight we dine in hell. So, the whole overarching concept of the campaign is basically that there's the city-state called, it's the Cormac city-state, uh, named after the outgrowth of a village called South Cormac. 
that is horrifically overpopulated. Like, the only reason why they've actually been able to maintain population is that their mayor is a doctor and understands germ theory. So, it is a very urbanized place, and they don't necessarily have ways of getting more food. They're a mercantile mecca, effectively, where they are the center of mercantilism on the planet. And unfortunately, a lot of bad things have been happening to the other cities on the planet, where the Cormac City State has accepted them as refugees. That's kind of been their shtick for the past 30 years. And eventually it basically came out about where it's like, we can't feed any more people if we have more refugees coming in. And we just heard word that the second largest city on the planet got devastated. So we need someplace else. And the city state is nestled between two nations. So they can't exactly expand into those nations without engaging in conflict. However, this being D&D, there's a magical solution to this. Um, in the campaign setting, actually in the previous campaign, they had discovered a what's referred to as the Celestial Lighthouse. It's effectively, for those of you that know older D&D lore, is effectively the... Um, why am I blanking on the name? The City of Doors from the Planescape setting. Um... All planes lead to the Celestial Lighthouse. And in fact, there are multiple gateways per plane to the Celestial Lighthouse. Uh, the planet that they're on has four, or had four known gateways. There's actually more that have been discovered at this point. But that's actually the reason why South Cormac is the center of mercantilism, is because the first gateway was discovered there and they widen it, basically made it into the medieval, well, not medieval, um, late Renaissance, early Industrial Age equivalent to a highway. So, direct contact. And there's a reason why I'm explaining these things. So, the party was nominally tasked with the idea of setting off and establishing a colony in a newly discovered plane that was connected to another plane that was connected to the Celestial Lighthouse. That plane was Dis, as in the city of Dis, one of the hells. Um, in the mythology of the campaign setting, there are no more demons and devils in their original planes. Um, they've been wiped out, chased off, exterminated, had genocide committed upon them, insert any explanation that you want here because all of them are true, yet all of them are false. And long story short, there's an empty, barren world. Except it's not actually barren. There's actually a lot of life there. And as the party is eventually discovered, Dis isn't even the original home of demons or devils. I always mix up those two. It is actually a point that they themselves evacuated too long ago. I'm going to cut across grass because I feel like it. I'm in a park. Um, so. Anyway. The party eventually discovered that the entrance to Dis only opened up right at about the time somebody discovered it from South Cormac. Which is a little weird. And eventually found out that it wasn't the only entrance to Dis that was opened up at the same time. And... Effectively, what you have is the start of a turn-based strategy game, where everybody is starting off with a single colony, settler, whatever you want to call it, and expanding from there. The difficulty is that things weren't balanced. Um, the party has encountered many other groups at this point, some of which were much more successful than others, some of which they've formed lasting friendships with. Um, there are two particular friendships that the party has that will likely hold for an extended period of time. One of which is the faction, so to speak, that started closest to the party. Those would be water elementals. 
along with a Merid who were being chased out of their home. The party befriended them really early on. They work really well together. The Merids are currently helping with some refugee efforts inside of their city. Um, the other one of note that went well is that the party accidentally got summoned by a an Ifrit. And it did not take much effort for the party to realize that there was something weird about the Ifrit. Let me let this person pass. Um, and the Ifrit apologized profusely and went, well, if you want to leave, I'll totally teleport you to where you need to go. Apologies for that, but we do happen to have this task that we want you to do. And because the party actually stopped, listened, considered, and accepted the task, and helped out the Ifrit and his assistant, they're on relatively good terms with them. Even though, as the party has figured out, the Ifrit is actually an Ifriti vampire. Which is an interesting mix of things, hence the character's name Mix. But anyway, fast forward quite a bit. One of the factions that the party encountered early on is a very aggressive faction. And it seems as though that faction comes from an alternate universe version of the same planet the party comes from. And eventually, this faction attempts to invade the home city of the party. Um, or I should say, attempts to invade the city of the party that got established by the party. This went very poorly for the invaders. So poorly that the party was very confused as to why they would have tried to invade with such an inept force. And then they figured out that it was a feint. The actual invasion target was the Celestial Lighthouse and the Cormac City-State. At this point, the Cormac City-State is at least partially occupied by these forces. Um, Disciples of the Goddess is what they would refer to themselves as. And the Celestial Lighthouse has been scoured. Um, the Disciples are firmly in control of the Celestial Lighthouse as of the start of the previous adventure, and it don't look good. They have actual military forces. The military isn't particularly strong, but one of the tricks that the Disciples of the Goddess have is that they are extremely good at buffing people. Um, to the point where you have a large army of people who can barely hold crossbows, that becomes incredibly deadly if they're all being buffed at the same time by somebody who's singularly powerful. It does mean that they have a bit of a weakness, namely smaller groups attacking. And the party has decided to go back through the Celestial Lighthouse and effectively be the rescuers of the Cormac City State. I need to pause because I'm about to cross a major road. So, um, the party has entered the Celestial Lighthouse from their side, which was very lightly guarded. The guards got taken out silently, so no alarms were triggered or anything like that. The way the Celestial Lighthouse is laid out is that it's rather noise insulating, so while there's no doors, between the rooms in the Celestial Lighthouse, it's effectively where you can't really hear between rooms. The rooms are very large, so we're not exactly talking about closets or anything like that, but it means that their enemies can't necessarily hear the party coming. And they don't know that the party's coming, at least didn't know. And the party brought along all of their friends. Their friends, including said Ifriti vampire, and his cohort, his cohort is a necromancer. Um, necromancer vampire, actually. Or necromancer vampire lord, technically. So, party basically took the Ifriti with them and directed everybody else to go cause chaos in the other direction. Because while this is technically a dungeon, a la, I have a dungeon map for it and everything, it's not like the party doesn't generally know the layout. They've been through the Celestial Lighthouse many times, at least this floor of the Celestial Lighthouse. The other floors are a complete maze to them. 
but <sighs> so long story short they are almost certainly going to be encountering a fight i'm trying to um alter my words a little bit so i don't spoil anything in case one of the players watches this but they're almost certainly going to be encountering a fight and the thing about this party is that they have multiple flyers um they are indoors which is going to restrict flying a little bit but these rooms are very large um like the ceilings are 30 feet up type of thing you can have giants that just walk through the lighthouse and they would fit so the trick is that this is going to be a combat that is going to rely somewhat heavily on positioning. One moment. So it's relying on positioning, and there are three flyers on the party's side. If you count the Afrit. There's the Afrit, there's an Aarakocra, which is a bird person, and there's a sorcerer with the ability to fly. Not just the spell, the actual ability to fly. Um, divine Sorcerer. So... That means that I'm going to need height, not just positioning on an XY coordinate basis. So what I'm trying to do is figure out the best way to show that. And sorry, I'm in front of the post office, which means there's a bunch of driveways here. It's annoying. Um, So yeah, and then the other difficulty is that some of my players are offline and some of my players are online. So I need a method to show this that works for everybody. Oh, that's a long line for the ATM. This might be a while, but that's okay. I have time. So yeah, so what I'm planning on doing is that I'm going to find a good way to effectively get myself a map maker, like a video game map maker, where I can rotate the screen, get different viewpoints and camera angles and so on, so the party can see things. And I need it to be something that'll work both, or the reason why I'm doing this digitally is that I need it to work in person and online. And the easiest way to do that is to just make it digital to begin with. Because role-playing isn't run from my house, so I can't exactly prep a dungeon on a table in advance or anything like that. Not to mention my cats probably ruined it anyway. So, yeah. Not great. <sighs> well, I'm going to be waiting in line for a bit. Let's not stand directly in behind the cars. This is a drive through ATM, and they don't offer other ATM surfaces. <sighs> so. Um... So I'm trying to figure out how to do this, and I ran a test run last adventure, which was a 2D map, so much easier, much simpler, and the map wasn't essential to see what was going on. In other words, if it didn't work, not a big deal. And we had problems with even just the 2D map. The main problem of which is the fact that my role-playing laptop is a piece of garbage. Um, no, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just slow and old. and. If I want to do any form of 3D graphics, the answer is definitely no. 2D graphics was causing me to be choppy. I was having issues just loading up a spreadsheet to keep track of initiative. Um, it actually caused my laptop to start bombing out. And most of the reason why is that I was streaming something to Discord, namely the map. So that was not great. Plus we had problems with one of the players not being able to see the map and us at the same time. That we have taken care of at this point, so that's not a big deal, but <sighs> laptop situation's a problem. If I had a gaming laptop, as in me personally, this wouldn't be a problem. A gaming laptop would be more than powerful enough for anything that I need to do, but I usually don't bother with gaming laptops. They're kind of pointless to me. I don't game while I'm moving, and if I do, I use my Steam Deck now, but I primarily game when I'm in a stationary position. So what I do is that I have a portable desktop with me and I bring a monitor. Which is probably what I'm going to end up doing in this case, is bringing the portable desktop and a monitor. 
but I need to be able to see two, which is a problem. And I'm lugging all of these things to role playing. Admittedly, I am being picked up by a car, so there's space in the car. It's just two people in a four door sedan type of thing. We can fit monitors, but I'm trying to make this relatively simple so I don't have too many moving parts that are going to break. So one of my tasks this weekend is to try and figure out the best way of showing these things. Uh, I've got a couple of products that I own already that I'm going to try first. Ugh, uh, somebody smelling strong of weed. Ain't that smell. Um, I'm going to try what I own first, and if that doesn't work, uh, Fantasy Ground Unity is actually on sale this weekend. So I may end up just picking that up just to show for one battle. It's a little ridiculous. Oh, that smell. Ugh. So yeah, that's where I'm currently at, which is not great. Um, I need to figure out the best way of handling this. Yeah, these videos aren't going to be merged. I'm already at 21 minutes and I haven't even talked about my rant about cash. Um, I'm trying not to make it seem like I'm recording the cars in front of me. Really wish they had a non-drive through ATM. But they don't. And they're actually open for business right now, which means that there's tellers there, which is compounding the amount of time it takes to get through here. But nobody's behind me at least, so I don't have the awkward dance of, yes, I'm actually in all of the lines at the same time. Please do not drive around me. Um, okay, yeah, there's somebody coming. I'm going to pause this.